lesson, which is uh, going to be good today, hopefully. I'm excited about it. And, fa- and let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, that we, Father, can honor our mothers, that today is the Mother's Day here. And we thank you and praise you, even for those that maybe don't have mothers and have gone on. But, Father, we still, in their memory, Lord, know that they did a vital, vital part for us. We thank you and praise you for that. And we uh, thank you for also giving us the Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, We are studying in Matthew. We're going to be looking at... uh, the very end of chapter 14 it's only a couple verses but here it again we could spend almost I can understand when the disciples said that the books could not contain all of what Jesus did and uh, if you have your Bibles Matthew chapter 14 uh, starting in verse 34 So it's 34, 35, and 36. Remember how we were talking about how Jesus fed the 5,000, which were just the men, and then uh, he went, he sent the disciples over to Sea of Galilee and says, go there, and he went up to the mountains, and then all the talk, he walked on the water, and we went into all of that. And here, at the very end here, Matthew is finishing up in his gospel. It says, And when they were gone over, they came unto the land of Gesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, now that was Jesus and his disciples, that when they landed and uh, people saw that it was Jesus, they got all excited and, and it says that they sent out into all of the country around about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Wow. I think that's pretty impressive. They, they saw Jesus coming over and obviously they must have heard about him. Uh, His fame preceded him, and when he landed there, they sent out all, and they brought everybody in the whole area there that was there that were sick, and it says in my Bible, they were made perfectly whole. Wow. I think that's, that's a great thing. So, we can see that uh, people recognize Jesus, brought, brought him all those that were ill. And Jesus, they said that, begged him, if we could just touch the hem of his garment, you don't have to lay hands on us or anything like that. So it's, we're kind of under trying to understand what, what that all means. I mean, just touch his garment. So, uh, the garment of a Jew long been symbolic of the covenant and the commandments of God. That's Numbers 15. Now, as we see this, we're going to learn some things here. That it just, it was something very symbolic and understanding. If we, t- if we can turn to our Bible, chapter in Numbers chapter 15, Numbers chapter 15, 37 through 41. I'll give you a second there to find that. Numbers 15, verses 37 and 41. We're going to talk on a, we're going to talk about this uh, hem of his garment, which we've already heard already some of this in uh, the time past with the the woman with the issue of blood and some other places so what what is this garment they're talking about here you can just touch the hem of his garment so in 
verse uh, 1537, it says here in Numbers, it says, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, so this is God directly speaking to Moses, and he is saying that speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation, and that they put upon them the fringe of the border in a rib band of blue. <laughs> He's telling them really what to do. It, it's kind of, well, this is all symbolic, obviously, because we know as we read the scriptures, there's a lot of sim symbolism there, a lot of understanding. Now, this is in Numbers. Now, as we go fast forward, we can see that Jesus was wearing these sort of symbolic clothing uh, the, what God is commanding Moses to tell the people to do. And it says in 39, And it shall come unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye shall seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, but after ye use... Wow, this is pretty heavy here. <laughs> God's... Uh, no, this is the Lord speaking. He goes, that you would seek not after your own heart or your own eyes, but after which you used to go, now my Bible says whoring. What, what does your Bible say there? What does it say? And now the mind is King James. But that's, that's pretty strong language. Okay? Is that what we do? As, as, as human beings, as, without the Lord, we just sort of go our own way. We're, we're, we're sort of like a mad dog, you know. We just, it, we have no conscience so many times without the regeneration of what God does in our life. We just sort of just do what people do. The pagans do. So the, the Lord is, is very strong in his language here. That you rape remember all of my commandments and be holy unto God. Well, he's telling us that we're supposed to remember. So these fringes, which I'm going to show you some examples, these they are to remind us the commandments of God. They're going to be before us. Okay, every time we see them, that's what the Lord says to do, says to obey it. It's, it's his holiness. Um. In verse 41, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. He's going to remind them, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Wow. <laughs> um, how can we argue about that? We belong to God. Here, and we read the other night in Psalms 100, verse, uh, well, Psalms 100 is not that long, but in verse 3, it says, it says, the Lord God, the Lord is God, and we are his people. He has made us, we belong to him. How in the world do we not realize that? We belong to him. So, as we looked here, and we just read in uh, Numbers, the modern Judaism continues to wear the four-corner undergarments containing the fringes. The seat seats, and it's actually uh, uh, spelled T-Z-I-T-Z-I-T, and it sounds like it has a T, but my understanding is it says it's pronounced seat seat, S-E-A-T, S-E-A-T, seat seat, okay? And... Uh, so what this symbolizes, as we already uh, is read in Numbers, that these are the, the commandments of God, that we would look upon them and see that these are the commandments of God. It's a symbolism. And uh, which represents uh, 613 commandments of the Torah that Moses gave us. There's, I know there's the Ten Commandments, yes, the, the 613 was sort of a sort of a breaking down of the Ten Commandments, 
and and we, we talked about building fences and and even uh, the Pharisees and the Jewish, the lawgivers at that time. It wasn't what God wanted, but what the the people did is that they would they would make so many different laws that it was basically impossible to keep, and uh, so we have to understand that uh, these th these are for our good, but sometimes even Jesus talked about them. Remember, he said, oh, well, your disciples, you guys don't wash your hands. Well, it wasn't that they washed their hands. They just didn't ceremonial, ceremonial wash their hands in a specific manner, okay? So it was like, oh, my gosh, their heads were exploding. But it, it, it wasn't... It, it wasn't that they didn't do certain things. They just didn't do certain things the way they saw it. Okay? So, uh, as, we, as we look at these, we can also see, and we're going to delve into that, that we are reminded in the uh, Matthew's account that Yeshua fo followed all the commandments. I think I can pretty much say that's, that's true. Okay, he was the embodiment of the commandments. He was the son of God. He came as a representation of the father. He says, I don't do anything unless the father tells me to do it. Isn't that nice? What do we do as human beings? Boom, we go out and do whatever we want to do. So we're certainly not following uh, Jesus' path, which we should. Okay? So, in Jesus, during that time, he, he looked very much like his Torah-observing contemporaries. He went to the synagogue, uh, taught in the synagogue, uh, the Pharisees, and uh, spoke. And, uh, and we can see that he was uh, just like everybody else uh, in his day. No, uh, as a symbolism of their faith in God, it was quite appropriate for very symbolic that the crowd sought to touch the outer fringes of his garment. Now, we read that, and we sort of just take a surface understanding. The fringe of his garment, okay, so Jesus had a garment, just touch it, and hopefully, you know, they have the faith in God. But it was much more than that. It was much, much more than that. Um, so by touching the garment, by so doing, the multitude was affirming their belief in Yeshua as a teacher sent from God and indeed the promised Messiah. Wow. That he was indeed. Not surprisingly, all who touched the seat seat were completely healed, as we read at the end of chapter 14. Now, the fulfillment of the promise from Malachi 4.2. Now, let's, we can turn to Malachi. It's the last book in the Old Testament. It's not, it's only like four chapters long. Malachi, and we will look at that and see what that means. Everybody find it yet? I've got it marked and I can't find it. Here we go. So we can see the Malachi were using very prophetic words to talk about the Messiah. And in verse 2 of chapter 4, it says, But unto you that fear my name, Shall the son of the righteousness arise, which would have been talking about the Messiah, Jesus, the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow as calves of the stall. Healing in his wings. What is that? Like a bird, wings? What does that mean? Well, actually, that is a, a Hebrew word. For a another, uh, the wings is a substituting in our English 
is the wings. Let me see. I have, a, I have it written here so I don't. It's part of the prayer shawl, the tallit. The, the tallit is a prayer shawl. This is what it. I mean, you can. It's actually the prayer shawl. See? Now. Jesus would probably have one of these. In fact, some of them, the, probably the one that he wore as well, which you can get them. Lo, lo, I mean, obviously, it's a lot of history here, of thousands of years. And this would be, you'd actually have a, a hole cut here, and you would wear this. It would be like one piece, and he would have, and David, yeah, when you, I guess when you pray, you put it on your head like this. And they would pray, okay? Now, the four corners, talking about the wings, the wings would be in the corner of here. See, in each corner? And there would be, this is the tassel that would be on the corners. There would be four of them. Now, modern, uh, even men today, the Jewish sect, or if you wanted to be Christians that believe in Yeshua, you can attach them to your belt buckle, your belt loop. So you get, you can put two on this side, two on this side. Now you're going to say, well, isn't that nice? What does that mean? Okay. Huh? This is a tassel. Um, yes, a tassel. Um, let me let me go on and go with this. So, what's that? These are the these are the seat seats, which is another name for tassel. Yeah, so I'm going to explain that one. So we have the prayer shawl, or they called it in Hebrew, it's a tallit. Okay, it's T A L L I T, tallit. Okay, now these you can buy these on Amazon and a bunch, and you can buy different sizes. They're made in Israel. Some, I guess, a lot of them are. And these can be different sizes as well. But here again, the symbolism and what this means. They said the people said when Jesus was wearing his tallit with the fringe. All they would, they says, all we have to do is touch the hem of his garment, touch his, his seat seats, because this symbolizing God's righteousness and power. That's what this meant. Now, and it represented the 613 commandments of the Lord. Of course, there's four of these. This thing is to have eight strands of white thread okay and it also has a strand of blue thread did you know that David you see the blue okay eight threads a blue thread get a load of this <laughs> it's supposed to have five knots one two three four I'm not sure why it's not have five it's supposed to have five five that's a symbolic, symbolic, one, two, three, four. And you have four between <laughs> the knots. Probably, the, I guess if you would say that's a knot there, okay? This is how nothing goes without understanding something. It's, okay? Now this, so we, have, we could put four of them on there. So as we as we go to further understanding, the, we are to reminded that all the commandments of the Torah that look very much that Jesus on the shoulder of his wings. Now those corners are represented as the wings. So we can clearly understand that this prayer shawl, there was healing in his wings. That's what they were talking about. 
that that they would that lady that went through the crowd that day that was you couldn't get even near Jesus but she understood that in this in these days that they were looking for the Messiah am I right the Jewish people were looking for a savior and they were told and they understood when the savior appeared upon the scene that there would be one of the signs there would be healing in his wings. This wings wasn't wings like a bird. The wings was on, the, on his tallit. Okay? And this tallit, there was power in that. And this lady crawled on her hands and knees, the way the story goes, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, which was really, if I could just touch his seat suit, I will be made whole. That's exactly what happened. And it's exactly what happened in Matthew's account here at the end of chapter 14. It says, if, if we could just touch the hem of his garment, we will be made whole. And they said they were made perfectly whole. Wow. So, uh, by so doing, this multitude, the multitude was affirming their belief in Yeshua as the teacher sent from God. Not surprisingly, and um, let me go on, I'm repeating myself here, but the fulfillment of the promise from Malachi 4.2, which I just read, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. So now we know the healing in his wings, okay? Because God instructed Moses to tell the people to wear and to put these on as a reminder of the commandments of God. Wouldn't it be nice that we would understand the commandments of God when something happens, when we need to make a decision, what kind of decision do we make? We go to our Christian counselor, uh, and uh, obviously we would go to the pastor and this and that. So many times we can get our own answers by the commandments of God, what God says in his word. Okay, we don't have to have, isn't it wonderful when God speaks to us? Okay, I mean, it's nice that we can talk to other people, which we should, you know, sometimes. But sometimes that's the first thing we go to rather than, hey, let's talk to Jesus. Isn't that, isn't that way I have a song right there? Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him about all our troubles, right? So, in this process, that we understand that these, uh, and I didn't talk about the knots yet. We have eight threads. So, um, in his, so Jesus, in his tallit. Um, and th this is what is, as we go into this understanding about the seat seat, in 1 Samuel, Samuel 24, verse 1 through 4, which we're not going to turn there, but I think many of us has heard this story. Remember when David was running away from Saul? And he was hiding in a cave. And Samuel, uh, not Samuel, but Saul went into the cave to relieve himself. And David was in the cave. Now, David could have very easily killed Saul right there. In fact, the, the, uh, Samuel tells us in his book that he takes his knife and cuts his tallit off. Basically, the way he said he cut part of his robe. Well, what was he cutting off? He was cutting off on his seat seat. And then when, and then when uh, Saul left the cave, and David came out and says, look here, Saul, look what I cut off of you. You didn't even know I was in here. And basically, David was saying, God is cutting off your power. Your power is no more. Well, you talk about a symbolism. It's God's authority and protection. He's taking away from, from Saul your authority of your kingship. And it wasn't very shortly after that. 
King David was installed as king after Saul committed suicide. So as we can see here in, uh, in Matthew again, in, in 23, 1 through 7, it says that Jesus talked about this as well. We'll look at, just turn that, 20, turn to that, 23, 1 through 7. And we can see in Matthew... And Jesus is speaking about this. He's speaking about, and it's just like uh, those in authority. One through seven. And it says, Then spake Jesus unto the multitude, saying, and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit at the Mongan seat, all therefore, whosoever they hid, you observe and observe to do, but do not ye after their works, for they do not. He's, he's, he's uh, talking about the Pharisees. You know, they tell you to do a lot of stuff, but they don't do it. They want you to do it, but they, don't, they won't do it. And they, For they bind heavy burdens and grievances to be borne putting heavy weights on the people, you know. It's almost like our politicians today, as we can sort of, you know. Oh, yeah, they're telling you to pay all your taxes and that, <laughs> you know. And then you see the people in higher uh, up echelons doing all the cheating and stuff that we hear about, but nothing ever happens to them. It's sad. So... Uh, in verse 5, it says, But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Now here he's talking about the Pharisees and the people that are in uh, authority in the, in the Jewish uh, religiosity. It says that they make broad their, uh, I guess you're probably going to see the same thing. It's pie lacratories. We're going to show you what that is. And enlarge the borders of their garments. They enlarge the borders of their garments. You know what they probably did? Because the people do it. They take these things, and they make them real long. There's like, hey, look at me. Look at me. It's like you, you're, you're going to an uh, inner city church where it's very, uh, uh, you know, people don't have very much money. And the pastor shows up driving a big Cadillac, you know. And we, we've seen that, okay. They've got jet airplanes. But they're telling you to give your money. Well, first of all, it's, it's kind of like uh, disparagingly where, hey, give money, and I'm driving around in jet airplanes. I mean, they may need that money to preach the gospel, but it sure doesn't look like it. Okay, so he's talking about, you know, they're enlarging their edges of their garments. Okay, and it's just like they, they said uh, here again when Jesus is making the comment where they go out on the street corner and they're, tells you not to go out and with big long faces that, hey, I'm fasting today. I haven't eaten. So you're out there like boo-hooing and and, you know, and, and praying to God. He said, pray to God by yourself. It's like you just got to let know everybody know your business. That's the, just to be known by man, you see. But God wants us, to our hearts to be looked upon, not just like, hey, look how fancy I am. <laughs> so, so it's interesting to note that, the tassels, the eight strings on each tassel, tied with cords, we can see that. We got white with the blue, and we're tied with cords. It's, now, this is symbolic that each is supposed to have eight um, of these uh, in each cord, 
and it symbolizes the seat seat. Now, in Hebrew, they take the numbers of the letters mean something. That's something that we don't understand, but that's what they do in he Hebrew. So T Z I T Z I T are letters, and they're numbered. And if you add them up, you come up with 600. That's that's the way they got it figured out. 600. Okay, where do we get the 13 from? Okay, we have five knots. So they add the five to that. <laughs> okay, represented the five books of the Torah. That's interesting, isn't it? Five knots, five books of the Torah. And we have, um, and we have four between the knots, four sections between the knots. And that is supposed to be, Representate the unspokable name of God, Yahweh, Y U H U, Yahweh, which is the unspeakable name of God. So we got eight, five knots, and four sections between there, which totals up 813. The details to which they went. Huh? 613. Oh, I said 800? <laughs> Sorry, I meant six, 600. There's a lot of numbering and stuff going on here yeah. in this little tassel. <coughs> now, the details to which they went as an example, okay, was, as you can see, the detail is very detailed, okay? And you'll find that throughout all of Scripture. It's like we had just read three Scripture verses, and you could see how much th that representates what God is trying to say to his people. Now, with that, I don't have a picture of this. I tried to get one. But that other word um, that Jesus was speaking about, is uh, it's ply lapsateres. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but they use this in the morning prayer, in the morning weekly prayers. The men would wear these to the morning prayer service. There are actually two boxes, leather boxes, and they put them on their head. And they tie it on their head, and when they tie it on their head, they have scriptures in them. And they actually put another one on their arm, and they wrap it around their arm. Now, like I said, they wear it during the morning prayer service. I can't imagine wearing them all over the place, but I, I, I could probably see that happen if, if you're a, a, you know, a Pharisee. But it was, it was the symbolism of, of, well, it says to bind them to your head and in your in your hands and you would wrap this and it would have the commandments of God in them here again very detailed so in this process that the the New Testament times of the seat seats took an additional excuse me important meaning as Jesus looked as the Jews looked for the Messiah clues of the coming one. They're looking for a Messiah. In Zechariah 8, and we won't turn to that, they prophesied that the Jews would take hold of the hem of the Messiah's robe because God was with him. So when we see this lady and we read about this lady going and touching the hem of the garment, that just wasn't some random act. She understood the hem of the garment was the part that, he, that they needed to touch. So in all of this, the common people believed that the Messiah came, that they would have special powers, and the women, just like the women, just like the woman about the uh, issue of blood. Anybody like to have any comments about any of that? It's, cl it's clear, but it's very deep, isn't it? 
Well, thank you for coming this morning. Let's just end in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for the time that we can try to understand what you are saying to us, Lord, what you're saying to our hearts, that, what, Father, that we can draw closer to you, that we can understand what you're doing with us and for us. We praise your name. We thank you for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.